All right, so looking at this chapter five frappy, we got a couple samples from students here and how they answered this. So we're gonna go through grading it to see what is expected and what we got to grade against here. We're looking at these problems. So again, I'm not going to read through the problem or statement. We'll go through the questions. So, so in part A here, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected student has completed the assignment? So to start out with this, we definitely needed to have the two-way table there listed, which in this first sample here, this is all good. That looks good. They did the right job of putting the proper values in the proper places for complete and not complete and dealing with the females and males. So we're good with that. And the second part of this that we had to check on them was actually doing the proper calculations. In which case it looks like everything went just fine with the proper probability here of being probability of being complete. So in which case they took their 30 over 40 and came up with a 0.75. So it worked out. So in this first section here, part A, they're going to get an E for that. All right, so let's look at this dealing with part B then. So in B it asks, are the events selecting a female and selecting a student who completed their assignments independent and justify your answer? Well, hopefully you all saw just by looking at the two-way table up there, and we discussed this, that they would not be independent, right, between selecting a female, selecting a female here, and then who completed their assignments. Those are going to cross. They're going to cross with these values because we'd be going with these two and going with these two, right? So that 19 would be the key factor that plays into this. So they cross. So you can definitely tell automatically that they are not independent, in which case you would just need to show the calculation for that. And they did in this case. They showed that the probability of being a female, they got us our 23 over 40 from the status here, and 23 over 40. And then they did the probability of a female given they were complete. So with that, they were able to take out for the status of being female and complete 19 over 40. I'm sorry, over 30, I apologize. We're looking across here for being female and complete given they completed. So in that case, they were different there. So because these values, these probabilities, were not equal to each other, this showed that they were not independent. So therefore, they get an E for this one as well. So far, so good. All right, so now we get into part C here. So again, it goes into suppose that the teacher randomly selects four students to do a problem on the whiteboard and only two of the students had completed their assignment. So describe how to use a table of random digits to estimate the probability that two or fewer of the four randomly selected students completed the assignment. Through the explanation here, they said two digit numbers 0, 0 to 74 will be students who completed the assignment and 75 to 99 will be the students who didn't. Okay, well, first off, right off the bat there, I'm not sure why they went into using these bigger numbers, but they did, in which case it kind of threw them off a little bit here, okay? So, unfortunately, in this setup where they didn't assign the digits correctly, um, with this, I would have probably used something similar to, like, let's say use um, 0, 1 to 30 for uh, completed, and then I would use 31 through 40 that said uh, didn't complete. All right. In that case, then we're going to be looking at the proper ratio here of who completed and who didn't complete. With this, the values here don't add up to the same of these completed and didn't complete. So first off, they're going the right direction, but they got that a little off there. Okay. So then we looked at this. Um, the selections here, let's see, they went on to saying read left to right, the table looking at the first four two-digit numbers, skipping repeats, count how many numbers are 00, zero to 74 is completed, and, the, and those four numbers are, and record whether or not there are, were two or less, and so on with the next set of four numbers, etc., etc. 
So with moving through that, they have shown they got the right process down. So they know what to do with this. The only thing they really messed up with is on their ratios here as far as using the 0, 0 to 7, 4 and 7, 5 to 9, 9. That just doesn't work out the same setup here for fraction-wise. Um, so with that, that is the only problem here. So they, because they're able to get credit for actually describing the right process to move forward with, even though they got the wrong ratio, they describe the right process to do everything else. So from, uh, from right here to the end, that's all good. So with that overall for part C, we would get a P for partially correct. All right, so moving on to part D. So we're going to complete three repetitions of your simulation using the random digits below and use the digits to estimate the probability described in part C. So since they went on with, they stuck with their initial findings of using the 00 to 74 and 75 to 99, that's fine. As long as they're moving forward, like I said, as long as you move forward and get this taken care of. And you may not lose credit. So with this, they went through doing the right way by skipping repeats and looking at this as far as complete, missing, complete, complete, so forth, finding these out. All right, so then it goes into the explanation here for describing it because it says it wants you uh, use results as with the probability described in part C. So you have to say what you came up with. So it states, in my three trials, never did a sample of four students have two or fewer complete the assignments, so the probability is zero. Well, the problem with this is simply because that the calculated probability is an estimate, right? He didn't indicate that calculated probability is an estimate. He just straight up said the probability is zero. That's a no-go on that, right? He's just making assumptions. You can't go through and say that. Now, granted, that's just one part of this we would look at. Again, we would look to make sure they followed what they described in Part C, which he did. So that part checks off. But didn't really, his explanation didn't really work out with that too well. So because of that explanation and saying the probability is zero just based off of his estimate, which is not correct because there are many more to go through, many more groups of numbers to go through with this process. And therefore, the probability probably would not have been zero. So simply because of that, by simply trying to make a statement of the probability is zero, that's where he lost a little bit of credit for that one. So with this one, they would get a P for partially correct as well. So overall, for student one, again, the P is worth 0.5. E is worth one point. So we got two E's and two P's. So overall, for sample one, for this first student, they would have gotten a three for their free response on this one. Okay, so let's look at sample number two here and see what we got, what's a little different. So sample two, same problem here moving forward with this. Now, for the setup here, again, the first problem was to, was a probability that a randomly selected student has completed the assignment. And with that, it's great. They got the whole setup here uh, as far as saying Probability complete, 0.75, but for AP graders, they don't like that. Just when you throw the work in there, or actually say the answer, there's no work. Again, remember what I said, you got to show things and work through problems like I'm somebody off the streets and I know nothing about statistics. You got to explain how you came up with these things before you give me just the answer. Because I have no way of saying that you know what you were doing if you don't tell me how you did it. So with this, because of no work, you're going to lose credit for that. Even though this is the right answer. This is the right answer. That's good. But there's no work to show it. No two-way table. No even written out. They didn't even say how to calculate the probability and what values they used to calculate that. With that in AP, they're looking at that going, well, maybe they'll look next over their shoulder next to the person next to them. There's no way of telling, okay? Even though this kid may be extremely smart and just be able to figure that out, you need to show your work. So with that, they automatically get a P, partial credit on that, okay? Or partially correct, I should say. For part B, so selecting a female, if it's independent, or selecting a female or the student completed assignment is independent, 
And they said no. So that seems to turn out okay for that for the most part. All right. But they didn't identify the two probabilities properly here, okay? So we're going for this in part B. The response didn't identify those probabilities. And, and if they should be the same or not the same. So for part B, they totally just got it incorrect on this one. And an I overall because there is no explanation there as why they're coming up with these justifications as no. So even though they were talking about the response being no, they are not independent. Um, therefore, it didn't make sense as far as how they came up with the calculation. So they lost complete credit on that. For part C, describe how to use the table. All right, so we're going to do the table here. So let's see what they figure that out. So they start out with saying 0, 1 to 30 is completed. Okay, that's good. Uh, 31 to 40 is incomplete. Then using a random digits table, uh, make sets of four using the numbers in between 0, 1, and 40, ignoring higher and lower numbers, repeating many times. So in part C, they were correct. However, the response didn't address what to do with repeated labels. They didn't talk about skip repeats. They didn't say skip repeats. They just said ignore of the numbers that don't fall within the range that they gave. So where is a skip repeat statement? You gotta say skip repeats for that, all right? Okay, so the last thing they didn't leave out, or they left out, I should say, in this part C is, they didn't say what to do at the end when you find out what your values are. So what is the end step? They didn't say what to do when you find out how many of the two or fewer of the four randomly selected students uh, completed their assignment. So they didn't say what the end step was, in which case to um, divide the number of trials where two or fewer students completed the assignment by the total number. So they didn't go through that setup. So even though they started out by explaining it somewhat right, the overall graders gave them an eye for this as well. Because the only thing these, that was done in the sample here was the kids were labeled correctly by numbers. That's all they really did. They didn't really explain as far as how the whole process should play out. I guarantee you this was probably like a little bit of a fight as far as possibly some partial credit or incomplete, and in which case it probably went up to a higher level and came out to be incomplete just because more or less the skipping repeats was not mentioned and the instep of how that actually come up with a final calculation. For student number two here in the sample, uh, part D, with this setup. So they at least had the first part going on this. Let's see what they did here. So they went through the process here. Looks like they were marking on it. They didn't really, I guess they underline is what they're going off of for the markings. There we go. Okay, so they got those, looks like somewhat going correctly with that. Uh, and then it says, if only one of my three trials did... I find two or fewer students that did their assignment, therefore the probability is approximately one out of three. So the annotations were unclear, honestly. I, like I said, I was trying to guess on what to go through here. Um, the actual grader said the annotations as far as how they calculated this were unclear. Again, with that, they should have drawn their lines when they did 12, 97, 51, 32. They should have put a line here to show separation between the trial. 58, 13, 04, 84, 51, boom. So what they're going off of are their numbers here. I think I think I went too far on that one, my bad. I think it was supposed to be after 84. I think that's where it was. Yeah. So after their four trials of students, all right? So again, when you're going with that, if you ever have to list these out and do this, um, you're going to put your bright, your lines here as far as where you're stopping for your actual, um, in this case, the four students that they were picking out of the number group, all right? And then for this, um, the response calculated a probability, okay? It was consistent with everything, the simulation, and they could indicate the probability of estimate, okay? Approximately, this key word right here, approximately, that is one that you can use and is very safe to use. I would never use exact, like he did up here in the student sample one where they said the probability is 
Is is a bad word to use. Is that no? Approximately is good. So approximately one third because they simply said approximately one third off of their little trial here. Even though it was unclear on how they came up with that one third through their little scratches and underlines, they got at least partial credit on that. So overall, again, E is one and P is 0.5. They got a P, two I's, and a P. So even though a lot of the work was for the most part correct, they were going in the right direction, they got a one. Because the main thing is they didn't show their work and they didn't explain themselves properly through everything. So again, guys, show your work, explain, talk about how you're going to work through the problem as if I knew nothing about statistics. Okay, So go through and show me what you know and explain it like you're talking to your brand new person every time you try to do a problem. Okay. All right, so hopefully that helps explain things a little bit more and what you got to think about when you're answering these types of problems in the free response section. All right, and I'll see you next time.